If you want to modernize your application by moving to MongoDB, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to migrate a relational model in PostgreSQL to MongoDB using Relational Migrator. We will be migrating a library management system where books can have multiple authors, authors can write multiple books, and users can borrow books and leave reviews. We will go through the entire process, download the relational migrator, establish connection, map our structure, generate code based on the collections, and finally migrate the entire workload to MongoDB Atlas. By the end, we will have a well-structured schema in MongoDB, taking full advantage of its flexibility. And if you want to learn why you should modernize and migrate from relational to MongoDB, go watch this video. I am Ricardo Mello, Senior Developer Advocate at MongoDB, based in Brazil. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start by downloading Relational Migrator, okay? So first we need to access this link here and click download, okay? Then select the platform that matches your operation system, download and install it on your machine, okay? So I've already done this step before, so I just need to open Relational Migrator, okay? So as you can observe, we have here two options to create a new project. Import from an existing Relational Migrator project, or start from scratch, okay? In this option, we can use a sample schema. This is super useful if you don't have a relational workload running and you want to explore it to itself. So you can click here and select these tables and start to um, use and explore relational migrator, okay? You have this other option, import from a SQL file, or connect to a live database, okay? So I'm gonna use this option for this uh, example today, okay? So I'm gonna click here and connect database. I'm gonna select add a new connection. And here we need to provide to inform relational migrator which database, which source database we want to bring our relational workload to MongoDB. In our case here, I'm using PostgreSQL, so I'm going to select PostgreSQL, and here I need to inform the connection string, okay? So, as you can observe, I've already uh, have my uh, instance of PostgreSQL running here, so, and you can observe the tables, users, reviews, issue details, books, okay? So, if you want to follow the same steps, I will provide this command for you, so you just need to run a Docker image or start and, and sorry and start the Docker container. Okay, so you can find both of this command in the description of this video. All right. Okay, so returning here in relational migrator, now it's time to establish the connection. So I'm gonna select localhost, Postgres, Postgres, and test the connection. All right, everything's fine. So now I click connect. Okay. Here are the tables that we have on our Postgres uh, relational model. Okay, so I'm going to select all of them because I want to migrate all of them and click next. Okay, so here I have some options, the global casing. I will uh, let keep the, the camo case uh, as default, okay, but I could choose, for example, a snake case. And here I have this option. You start with a recommended MongoDB schema. This is super useful because MongoDB can recommend it which tables should become top level, okay? So if you remember our MongoDB desired schema, you will remember that we have five collections. So let's uh, check them. So I want the users table becomes a users collection, reviews to issue details, and authors, okay? And other, the other tables will be uh, an embeddable, all right? And then I'm gonna click here in next. And finally, I need to provide a project name. I'm gonna call this as library, okay? All right, now let's start mapping our structure, okay? So first, as you can see, we have your main diagram. At the top, we have our relational workload, our PostgreSQL relational model with all its tables, okay? And below we have our desired MongoDB schema. I'm gonna click here in the corner and select MDB as I want only this view, okay? Then I'm gonna click here in project settings and click in single inherited primary key. This means we are telling relational migrator to detect all primary key coming from PostgreSQL and set them as underscore ID, okay? Then I'm gonna toggle suggested mappings to get some tips from relational migrator. 
All right, so now let's work on books collection. I'm going to select books collection. And here we have mappings from relational tables. And I want you to pay attention to book attribute. In relational workload, it uses it to be a separated table, okay? But here in MongoDB, it is an embedded array. This is a type of MongoDB. This is an advantage of MongoDB has over relational database, so we can leverage this option, okay? All right, so um, let's edit this attribute, okay? So as you can see, the field name uh, has the name um, book attributes. I want to rename to just attribute. I don't want the book ID for this now, and I'm gonna click here, save and close, all right? Okay, again, here in books collection, it's time to edit genres, okay? So again, I don't want the book genres, I just want genres as the name. I don't want the book ID too, but this time I will select an option to tell relational migrator to create an array of primitive values okay so as you can see now i have an array of strings for genres right i'm gonna click here save and close okay so now let's say that every time that we query books we want to retrieve the author's name too okay so instead of perform a join in authors i'm gonna get that information and embed it on books collection to just perform one single query okay so what i need to do i'm gonna select books click here in add and select this option embedded documents here i will inform the search table which is authors and now as you can see i have the authors here embedded in my books collection, okay? I don't want this two information, I just want to keep name, because every time I want to show the, the, the author name, and plus I want to save ID, because in the future, if I want, for example, to get some information from authors, I can perform a dollar lookup using this information, okay? And here I'm gonna select advanced settings and select this, this option, merge fields into the parent, okay? Nice, I'm gonna click here, save and close. But now, if you pay attention, you see that I have author ID, I don't need this because I already have here, and book ID, so I will remove this. So I'm gonna click here again, edit, and remove both of this information, and I'm gonna rename for authors here too, okay? And click save. This is known as extended reference pattern, okay? This is super useful. I won't go into much details, but I highly recommend studying these patterns. They are super, super useful, okay? Perfect. And finally, let's say that every time that we query a book, we want to see the last three reviews, okay? So I'm gonna select books again, click here in edit, and select embedded array. And this time I need to inform a search table, which is review, okay? And here in advanced settings, I can add an array conditions. And I click here and I say to relational migrator to sort in order by timestamp, okay? And limit number of three holes, okay? So, and I don't need the book ID to here, okay? So I'm gonna save this. Um, so every time that we query, we will have these three last information coming from reviews, okay? So this is another pattern known as subset pattern, okay? So go ahead and study them because they are super useful, all right? Very good. So, and finally, I just need to uh, change something here in the authors. Uh, as you can see, I have author alias. I want to rename it for aliases. And I don't need the author ID. And again, I will use it, that information that I showed you before, that option, create an array of primitive values, all right? And I'm gonna click here, save and close it. And we have here our structure um, ready to be migrated, okay? But before moving forward with the migration, I want to talk about code generation. If you watch the first video of this series, you will remember that I've talked about some challenges during the migration process. One of them is legacy code. What we should do with it, how to handle them. Relational Migrator has an option to generate code 
based on our collection. So let's say that my legacy code is in Java and I want to replace all of them with this new uh, code. So I just need to select Java, select the template, and here I have the code generated okay so okay you need to take care of the details and adjust whatever is necessary but definitely this is an option to speed up your development okay also if you want to convert query for example let's say that you have here a query an sql query and you want to convert this into java code you just need to type the query here and or paste it, select the target language and click in convert. Then Migrator will generate this code for you and you just need to uh, adjust according to your requirements and replace it into in your code, okay? Also, we have here an option import from database. So you can also convert stored procedures. So for example, I have this one, get books by journey. So here is the uh, stored procedure. Let's say that this time I want to convert it into JavaScript code. So the same thing, uh, you just need to wait for a moment, then Migrator will generate this code for you. Okay, so this is a good option, an excellent option to speed up your development. Okay, so here is the code. All right, everything is ready to be migrated. So the last step is click here in my data migration and create migration job, okay? So first we need to inform a source database, which is PostgreSQL that we are running, okay? I've already filled out this information, so I'm just going to click here and connect. And then we need to specify the destination, okay? Where we want to send the data, okay? We are bringing data from PostgreSQL and we want to send this data to MongoDB Atlas. So I have already have my cluster here. So I will deactivate this later on. Okay. And here I will define a, a database name. Okay. So I'm going to call library. All right. And then I'm going to click here connect. Okay. So don't forget to inform your connection string here and follow these steps. Okay. Well, this step right now we need to select a mode. Okay. So uh, a migration options. Okay. So the mode is, we have two options. First, continuous, which uses change data capture, okay? So any events that happens on PostgreSQL will be automatically replicated to MongoDB Atlas, okay? But to do that, we need to follow some uh, scripts. We need to generate a script and run it on our PostgreSQL, okay? But we, uh, we are not going to do this for now. We will use a snapshot, okay? So I will select a snapshot here. And okay, review summary. And now, as you can observe, we have 90 tables to be migrated. We have almost 90,000 rows, and this is the data size. Okay, so I will click here in start and just wait, and I will uh, return when it finishes. Okay, finally, the migration process is completed. It took four minutes to migrate nine tables. All right, okay, so now let's open our uh, MongoDB Atlas to check these informations. Okay. All right. Here is the MongoDB Atlas. We have the library with all those uh, collections that we migrated. And here, for example, in books, we can observe that we have the reviews, the last three reviews that we wanted to, genres, attributes, and authors with name and ID. Okay. So everything went well. And now we have our data, all data migrated to MongoDB Atlas, okay? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to share it, leave a comment, and most importantly, try out Relational Migrator for yourself, okay? See you soon. Bye.